Hello everybody and welcome back to The Daily Me episode 2. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how I clean and maintain all of my machines. Let's get going. So this is a request that I've had a lot over the years and I quite like to think that I am pretty proficient at doing this due to my employment at Axminster. My job on weekends was essentially to scrub down a lot of the machines on display and I think I've got a pretty good system for it now. And so we're going to be going through cleaning out bandsaws of all the dust and things like that, lubricating beds and preventing rust on planers and thicknesses, clearing out all the dust under my sanders and also sorting out the tables because they're a little bit worse for wear at the moment. I want to sort this out today as well, the uh, pillar drill. The, the rise and fall of the bed always hits the extended table that I made and so I want to cut a little notch out the back and round that off. Again, no idea why I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to do it today. The old router table's got a few spots of surface rust on it and the old metalworking equipment has a very thin layer of dust on it at the moment, which is giving me the heebie-jeebies. And also this lathe is just pretty disgusting, so I need to sort that out as well because we're going to be using this a lot when making the marking knives later this month. And so job number one is gonna be vacuuming out each and every one of these machines and get rid of all the dust that's piled up in there over this past project. Right, so all the machines are now vacuumed down and they're ready to have their tables cleaned and de-rusted. There was one thing I want to show you real quick though, and it was this thing here. You might have seen me try and scratch it off in that montage. Basically, it was a big old bunch of compressed shavings. And these shavings were most likely caused by... Oh, hello. What's going on it? Ah, this locking action. So when that bed is pulled down into the bed, it's squished a load of shavings under it. And as a result, that bed may be slightly off. And so watch out for that on your machines. This is just one example. Other ones might be in the stops that set your machine back to zero. You don't want anything compressed in there or else that won't go back to zero. Or for example, in this locky thing underneath the arm on the lathe and in many other things like depth stops and T-tracks, for example. So keep an eye out for those bunched up shavings and other compressed things that shouldn't be there. Make sure to clean them off and make sure to keep an eye on them. And so next, I'm gonna degrease the machines with this Liberon wax and polish remover. This will remove any of the previous lubricants I've put on here, any greasy finger marks on it, and also resin left over from the timber that I previously put over the machine. This just gives you a good starting point to de-rust and lubricate afterwards. And obviously when I'm doing this, all the machines have been isolated, so there's no chance of me accidentally kneeing that on switch and uh, getting a surprise. Yeah, there you go.
Right, so the machines are now degreased and it's time to start getting rid of some of that surface rust that has accumulated over the past project. And for this, I like using a abrasive mesh. Unfortunately, I don't have any pads of it, but I do have this satin mop that used to be this size and I've used it so much it is now that big. And this is the exact material that I like to use to get rid of the surface rust. If you've got any heavy pitting going on or you've just bought a second hand machine and it is disgustingly rusty, then you might wanna use some sort of rust remover. But because I stay on top of this, I haven't got anything too heavy to get rid of and it's just scraping off that upper layer. And so you could just go straight at it with your abrasive. That'd be absolutely fine. I personally like using a lubricant sort of thing for the abrasive to help carry away some of the, uh, the gunk and all that. And also the lubricant I like using is this, which is camellia oil. And this is actually a way of um, preventing rust anyway. And so, yeah, this works quite well. <laughs> So moving on to the metal machines, I won't do too much of this abrasion on the table of these because I don't want to accidentally round off any edges that shouldn't be rounds and things like that. Because these carriages and tailstocks rely on so many of these faces and facets to keep them locked in. And so I don't want to start messing with them too much. Same again with the milling machine. Like there's little patches here that I can sort out, but I'm not going to do any heavy scrubbing. You can get away with this on woodworking machines, however, because they're such wide bearing surfaces and the wood itself doesn't necessarily need to be like perfectly micron flat like you would with metal. Okay, so all the machines have been scrubbed down and that is by far my most favorite part afterwards, not throughout, it's disgusting. And so the next part is we need to wax the top of these cast iron tables. And this is the point where you've got to work out what do I want to be grippy and what do I want to be slippy? For example, a planer bed, do you want that to be grippy or slippy? Obviously you want it to be slippy because you want the material to pass over it easily. You don't want to be stuck on it as you push stuff over and have to deal with the chatter of the knives as well. So. This one's going to be slippy. A bandsaw table, for the exact same reason, we want this to be slippy. Slippy, 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 ooh. Now, do you really want to be waxing a surface that has a locking thing on it there, can't remember the name for it, and a tailstock locked down onto it? You want that to be somewhat grippy, but definitely not slippy. Same again on the old milling machine. We kind of want that to be grippy. And then of course the metal lathe bed. Now, technically we want this to be slippy because most of it is done on the feed of this, but because it's a metal working machine, it's best to grease it and oil it instead. You don't really want to be putting wax on it, ideally. Although you could. And while I'm down this end of the workshop, I realize I haven't addressed the miter saw yet. This thing's all aluminium, so it doesn't rust. And to be honest, I just give this a hoover down from time to time and that's it. And so, in consumable corner somewhere, I've got some machine wax. And by the way, all the products that I'm using in this video, I'm gonna list in the description below, and those will be affiliate links. So if you purchase any of them, I will get a small cut at no extra cost to you. And if you don't believe in the legis legit legitimacy of that, then there'll be a link to an affiliate disclaimer where I disclose all of my relationships with the companies I work with, and uh, hopefully you can get some sort of faith in it. And so this machine wax is from Axminster. It's easy to apply, low friction and silicon free, so it won't affect any of the finish of the material that you pass over it. And this stuff, you just slap it on like you would with any normal wax on a piece of wood, and it will protect the machine, lower the friction, and 
just make it nicer to use. In theory, you don't necessarily need to use this at this point to prevent any rust because the camellia oil I put on previously to help lubricate that abrasive will protect this surface from rust. This is just being used purely for the low friction capabilities. And so uh, here we go. <laughs> and I'm quite liberal with it under here because nothing annoys me more than material getting stuck halfway through the thicknesser. So yeah, I like coating this area. Right, so the machines are all cleaned down and I'm not gonna go as deep as like the bearings and the drive belts and things. They don't really need it at the moment and I'll probably attack that later on. Just as a reminder for that whole process of cleaning down the tables though. Firstly, degrease. Secondly, scrub off the surface rust and then use a wax over it. Nice and simple and it is a amazing position to be in. Like this workshop is just ready to be made messy again. And speaking of, the first thing I'm gonna do is sort out this pillar drill table. Because at the moment, I have to lift it up like that in order to get this handle <laughs> underneath it. And it's just annoying. So I'm gonna cut that little notch out and then we'll call that another job well done. Right, and then that's all we're gonna have time for today. So all the machines are cleaned down and look spectacular. And I have figured out or fixed another pinch point that has been annoying me ever since I made that blimmin' table. And it's only just taken me till now to fix it and it literally took me five minutes. Happy days, it's been a good day today. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and join us tomorrow where we're gonna be making the bank to start storing your Rob Me tokens in. I'll see you then. Thank you.